morning and welcome to the channel. You can see we've got the buggy in tow. I put a post on Instagram that I was heading to the dyno today, but I know a lot of you guys that are on the YouTube side of things, you're not necessarily on the Instagram side of things and vice versa. But yeah, we've got another dyno session today and uh, today would be Monday. We leave for Durham Town this Thursday. There was this big question in my mind, do I really want to dyno this thing right before a trip, run the risk of breaking something? And I thought about it, and the answer is heck yeah, dude. So we're bringing this thing down to the dyno. Now, today's dyno session is going to be a little bit different. I, I figured I was going to blow up the engine the last time before it was built when I had the turbo on it, and I didn't really care. And uh, so I just ran the thing up on probably more boost than it should have been. I'm going to be focusing today a lot on finding what the absolute best VVT settings are for the 3A92, at least in my current configuration which really ought to be very close to you stock guys. We didn't change the lobe separation angles or anything on the cams. So as far as the timing of the cam, it's been left stock. The only thing we changed with the cam was we increased the lift and the duration. That'll be uh, interesting to see where the best VVT settings are, or even if I should be running VVT, maybe I, I'd be better off just turning VVT off entirely. Now that I'm running as much boost as I am, I really do have to be more careful with the ignition. One of the things I found early on about the 3A92 engine is that they don't really like a lot of ignition. At least my engine did not like a lot of ignition. So we're tuning the fueling, we're tuning the VVT, and I'm going to be tuning the ignition table. So that's today's goal. Of course, we'll get a couple of power runs. I'm really excited because it's been over a year since Widow has been on the dyno. And uh, anyway, fingers crossed that we don't blow this thing up just a couple days before a trip. So I'll see you guys at the dyno. Now, unfortunately, guys, my main audio got corrupted on probably 80% of this Dino Tune session for my GoPro. Really, all it was is just me running through a couple of mild power runs, uh, getting a feel for it, and then tuning the VVT and the ignition timing like I mentioned. Now, at this point, I just finished probably the first three or four runs. The blue line that I'm about to show you is the most recent run. And you see that little bobble right there? What that is, is that's where the wastegate cracks and starts to open. So I was able to tune that out with just adjusting my boost duty cycle table. Hey, and by the way, we just made 260 horsepower, boy. Now, this is me focusing really hard on operating the dyno machine, driving the stick shift car, and running my own tuning session in the background. Okay, so on this shot here, gives you a very good idea of how I was able to smooth out that bobble just through tuning the wastegate crack pressure and then also tuning the VVT. A couple more runs down, and this is the final clip without audio. We broke 300, baby. 316 horsepower, 227 torque at 6700 RPM. Man, what a little champ this Pulsar Turbo is. Pulsar GTX 2860R, uh, 6.4 AR is what I'm running. Very impressed with that. I'm not going to do any more hard pulls, maybe one more hard pull, but I'm going to tune some of the fueling right now because I haven't changed that at all. Just want to kind of do some tuning because it's so hard to tune those higher registers. And I'm out of injector completely, so I should probably take a little bit of boost out of it, but we'll run it one more time where it's at.
I'm just out of I'm out of fuel up here, so I'm not even gonna run it up that high. It's, what's the point in putting more boost in if I don't have fuel to go for the boost? That's pretty perfect, boys. I'm still completely out of inject injectors, so I'm not gonna I'm gonna run it up much higher than that. In fact, for Durham Town, I will turn it down. That's a lot of power, a tiny machine. So there we have it. 326, 327. I don't remember if this is my maximum run, but 326. I feel like the top run was 327, but close enough for me. And that's at the wheel, so what, 350 at the crank? Not too bad for a 1.2 liter. 1200 cc, same size as a motorcycle engine. So very happy with that. Big thank you to Redline Tuning in Daytona Beach. These guys are awesome over here. If you need dyno tuning done, give them a call. Redline Tuning Daytona. Well, boys, she made 326 at the wheels horsepower. That's as much as I can run, because as you saw there, we were out of injector. I was running 120% duty cycle towards the end. Once it hits about 7,000 RPM, it's the RPM that's hard to get fueling for. But there's a couple of things I'll say I'm very surprised by. The power is one of them, but I'm also very surprised at how low the actual torque is. The red one is the highest run that we ever did. That's 326. Then I did a 319. I lowered the duty cycle on the boost at the top end because I just kind of wanted to limit the top end power. Three, 234 is what we're making. That was the highest torque. But that's good because torque is what is honestly going to break the transmission and or the axles. So I'm happy to see it's only making a little bit more torque than it was previously with the old turbo. But of course now we've got way more top end we can put into it. And I wasn't at a boost. I was hitting 30 pounds of boost with the wastegate setup that I have. And honestly, it's got some more in it. So if I really wanted to run this turbo out as far as I could, what I would do is just put bigger injectors in it. So I'll save a couple of different boost duty tables. First time people drive in it, I'll turn the boost down to that 15 PSI. We'll just run it like that. In fact, that's about where I'm gonna be running it at Durham Town, probably 20, 25 pounds of boost. No reason to go up to 30 because you can't control 330 horsepower in this thing, not at the wheel. If you had excellent tires, and I do have pretty excellent tires, but I still need these to be beefier. I need them to be wider, so I'm gonna get a wider tire in the back. And um, didn't break anything, absolutely nothing. I didn't push any coolant out during that entire run. The intake air temperatures were looking really good. It would run, if I let it idle for a long time, it's about 110, 115 degrees at most with the intake air temperatures, and that as I'm doing a pull, that will drop down to about 100 to 105 degrees. I could turn this guy up a bit and just get a little bit more fuel across the board, but you know what? It's set up to run that fuel pressure right now. I don't wanna go messing with the fuel pressure and detuning the engine right before the trip. So after the trip, we'll mess around a little bit more with that fueling. So crank horsepower. That's about 375 at the crank. That's how much power my truck makes. My 6,000 pound V8 truck is making that.